I will hand over to our first speaker tonight, uh, William Priest from the Geospatial Commission. Yeah. Um, pleasure to be here, seriously. And it's a pleasure to be, as mentioned, Chief Exec of the first UK's Geospatial Commission. Um, I want to do three things in the next seven minutes, 33 seconds. Firstly, tell you why we're here. Secondly, tell you what we've been doing. And thirdly, tell you what we're going to do in the next 12 months or so. But firstly, uh, we are an expert committee at the heart of government. Um, we reside in the Cabinet Office, which gives us the ability, as we're a cross-cutting cross policy area, to work across all of the major government departments. That's really important. We're a manifesto commitment, always fun being a manifesto commitment, established in 2017 um, and backed by Treasury funding of 80 million uh, in the autumn of 2017 to do good things. I'm going to talk about some of those good things to leverage and realize both economic value and public sector value. How do we, how do we use geospatial data more effectively to optimize public services? So what do we have oversight for and what is geospatial data? Do we know? Basically, it's to do with place and location. Everything is somewhere, is, is a sort of strap line I, I have in my head. And 80% of all data sets are location or place-based, 80%. So there's a huge array of existing geospatial data sets out there. And we have strategic oversight for the geospatial elements of what we call six partner bodies. Hopefully those are familiar to, to all of you. Ordnance Survey have been around for 227 years. Hydrographic Office around for 225 years. We have a plethora and a history of producing the world's best geospatial data. And in fact, the UK is the, the, the world's second leading geospatial nation. Ask me a question about how we measure that. So we have oversight for bringing together those six bodies for the greater good of the private sector and the public sector. And here's our sort of strategy and plan on a page. What have we been focused on to realize that value? And we started life, as I said, just over a year ago on the back of a digital land review, which was led by the Cabinet Office, looking at what is the value if we could leverage and use and bring together more of those geospatial data sets I mentioned from Earth observation on the land, below ground, and marine geospatial data. What value could we realize? Well. We believe there's six to 11 billion sterling per annum in incremental value in the private sector every year if we can do a number of things. And a number of those things are, are list, listed on here. So for example, data interoperability. What if we could bring together the data that Hydrographic Office produces with land registry, with Ordnance Survey more effectively? What if we could make that more accessible to more government departments and more of the private sector? What if we could maintain and improve the data quality of all of those data sets to really drive the quality as well as the accessibility? So holding your head 6 to 11 billion, that's one of the goals and targets we're going after. Not this week, next week, next year, but we have a plan in place and building to ramp up programs using our investment to realize that private sector value. I'll touch on where that value we think comes from. Doing okay. Um, I'm also responsible with my team for some of the key contracts um, that we drive those partner bodies. Um, so I, I'm, I'm accounting officer for the agreement with Ordnance Survey. It's called the PSMA, Public Sector Mapping Agreement. Also responsible for some of the other air photography contracts so that we can be, wait for it, the intelligent customer. So our, our remit is to be the intelligent customer aiding and abetting the producers of the data so they can get that data information out to the likes of you who need it, be it a private company, a local government authority, or a public sector department. So those are the, the, the ways we're driving value. I should just touch on before I go to the next slide, we, we, we're en engaging with the whole ecosystem. We're not just sort of sitting in Whitehall writing our plans and strategies. We've been engaging really deeply with both the private and public sectors to understand what needs do they want? What can we do better? What are the problems? And we're tackling some of those problems, as I said, in terms of interoperability and ac accessibility right now. So that's our plan on a page. What have we been doing? Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm excited. I mean, the team's excited. I mean, I think we've done a huge amount in the last year. Um, just two things to call out. Crowdsourcing, some of you may be familiar with crowdsourcing technologies. That is fairly new for the Cabinet Office. So we were really excited to launch just a couple of months ago those 10 projects. So keep an eye out for those. There's some really interesting um, source of data that we're capturing from SMEs out there. Secondly, did you see the underground asset mapping? pilots, really interesting. We spend a billion plus in terms of cost, because when a telco digs, they hit, they hit a gas main that they didn't know was there. So we, we're, we're doing two pilots to start to map what's under the ground, leadingly obvious, but not been done before. So again, watch out for that. We hope to, to roll out a national project in the next two to three years. And in the last 60 seconds, again, what are we focused on for the next year? High value market opportunities. My boss, John Manzoni, asks regularly, when are we going to see the 6 to 11 billion? Fair question. Um, John, we have a plan. It's going to take some time. But we're focused on two high-value sector markets now, housing, land and planning, infrastructure and construction, which will give about 4.6 billion of the 11. We're also focused on natural resources. Um, retail is really interesting. Logistics, think of Deliveroo, think of what Amazon are doing. They're geospatial companies. Um, we're also focused on, with my chair, we have a commission, by the way, the clues in the name. So it's Andrew Dillnott is our chair, a leading economist, and we're looking at what's the best way for us to intervene as a commission in terms of fixing some of the challenges in the marketplace. Um, so that's what we're doing. We will change the way we all live, work and travel through deploying better geospatial data. Thanks. Josh Bell from Liberator UK Limited. William, one of your early slides mentioned market failure in this area. Can you elaborate on what that actually means in practice? Yeah, Excellent. thank you. And then we've got a question over there. Hi there, Ian McGill from Spend Network. How much better would your data be if the postcode accounts file was open? Thank you. And then we've got a question in the back row, the front section, just there. Hi, I'm Catherine Bromley, Office for Statistics Regulation. Um, how are you working with um, geospatial data providers in the devolved administrations to yeah. make it a UK Yeah, good question. Great, fantastic. Uh, Josh, good question, thanks. Um, yeah, market, market failure is, is a really good question. Um, as you know, I'm an ex-telco guy as well. Um, we're looking at, I think, three potential areas of market failure in geospatial, some are analogous to, to telecoms. One would be, and it's not quite the same, but is there a failure in terms of mapping, both in terms of quality and extent? So are we mapping in terms of what we need for, for 5G rollout, uh, for IoT, for AI, for machine learning? All of those are going to be powered and enabled by geospatial data. So where things are, if it's an autonomous vehicle, is going to be pretty important in relation to a bollard, street furniture, a building, and so on. So that's, that's a big question for us working with some of the telcos in terms of have we got the extent and quality and detail of mapping that we will need. Um, technology failure, so one of our re, um, mandates and remits, which I don't think I mentioned, um, is looking at future technologies. So in parallel to doing our five-year geospatial national plan, um, we're doing a future tech review as well. So we, we are looking at and studying where do, where do we help and where can we intervene to help to innovate the geospatial marketplace in the UK. 
so we can help the export market and we can attract inward investment. So that's not necessarily a failure, but it's about stimulating and enabling a central government. Um, failure of skills. Um, one of the big, big legacy areas me and my team would like to focus on and leave behind potentially is skills. Government's done a great amount of work in terms of DDAT and the DDAT profession, data and digital and technology. Um, four to 8,000, I think, DDAT professions in government. There's 400 geographers, growing, but much less. Geospatial is the, is the convergence, I think, of data and digital and geography, i.e. place, in terms of digitization of place. So we're looking at and working very hard with other government departments on skills from the school curriculum up through university uh, curriculum, up through apprenticeships and on-the-job training. So it's kind of the core mapping as a, as a failure and opportunity, technology and skills. Long answer, but that's, that's sort of top of my mind. Um, yes, I think the other, it's, a, it's a burning question. Um, we're not going to sort of fix that right now. This is the postcode file, um, which we outsourced, sold off. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it's an area in terms of we're, looking, we're not going to buy it back. Is this being live streamed? Where's this going? Um, we're aware of the issue. We're aware of the issue. We're looking at it. We're talking to those parties involved. Um, what do you, I mean, maybe not now, but I'm interested to know what you think are the barriers and what could be improved. It's more about how much better. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I, we're not hearing it as, um, the, I mentioned the digital land review, there were 21 barriers, things we could do better. Um, there, there are 20 other things we're focused on. Grit, grit in the system, friction, interoperability, accessibility, using the data we've got, sharing the data we've got, all those kind of things. But it, it's, it's, it's on our sort of, it's on our radar for sure. That didn't really answer the question, but the DAs are part of the commission. Um, so the DAs, it's a devolved um, policy area. So we're working very closely with Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, and they have observer status on the commission. So we do work very closely with them. One of my team is in Belfast on Friday. So we, we engage. I'm in Wales next week. So we're working very closely with the devolved. Fantastic. Okay. We've got time Three for another, yeah, sure. We've got time for another set of questions. I'm going to come to you first. Um, then we'll come to you next. And anyone wants to ask the third question? If you're in the room next door and you'd like to ask a question, come to the door. And we've got one over there as well. So it's one, two, and three. Hi, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm working in insurance, and I just wondered, yeah. when you talk about the accessibility of this, yeah. I know one of the hugest barriers is going to be how easy it is to use what or how have you pulled all those data sources together into one coherent tool? And I just wanted to know how you thought about doing that. Thank you. Um, uh, looking at the crowdsourcing, um, you mentioned it's the first time the Cabinet Office has oh, done that. I'm guessing. Um, and so what have you learned from undertaking that exercise? Did it generate true innovation, things that you wouldn't have otherwise mm -hmm. have encountered? Mm -hmm. Good question. And then just down here as well. <coughs> Uh, Simon Briscoe, an independent consultant. Uh, you say you're going to produce outputs for public sector companies, uh, for the public private. sector and private sector companies. Yeah. Will you do anything for ordinary people and, and yeah. for the public good? Because most of those bodies you note as your partners are notorious for not sharing anything. Which, Ever. Is, which is why we're here. At all. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it how you mean it, but it's, uh, I, I take the point. Um, so again, good question. Um, insurance. We, I've met a number of insurance companies. One has 4,000 geospatial people. I have 40. So, you, again, you could say geospatial. In, in, insurance companies are geospatial companies. In terms of you know, flood prediction, flood protection, and insurance associated with risk, it's all to do with geospatial information. So we are talking to them and others about the joining up of the interoperability of data sets. Is there a holy grail about one single tool or app? Prob maybe. We're looking at that. That's not this week's challenge. But, you know, a hub of hubs or a portal of portals, a single platform is, is certainly something that we are exploring, exploring in terms of our policy and strategy. A good analogy um, where I've spent some time with my colleague Tim is in the U.S., 
So the defense intelligence have done, you know, kind of brought this together because they kind of have had to. So there are, there are analogies in terms of bringing geospatial to data in the singularity of a platform. Um, it's not happened here yet, but we are, it, I think it's more about open source, APIs, application-based, and therefore more open so everybody has access to it, be it, be it local authority, public sector, or, or a private user. That is what we're focused on, which kind of answers your question, but I'll come back to it. It's early days on crowdsourcing. You know, it's, we're running it through Innovate UK, who many of you may know. Um, and we had great interest to begin with. You know, so we had a long list. We came down to those 10. Um, you know, it's literally a month old. So kind of, can I come back in a, six months when we're done? And I'll feed back on it. But I'm really excited by that because, you know, I've personally not worked on a crowdsourcing initiative before. This is for the greater good. You, you are absolutely right. Um, some of those partner bodies have commercial models. Ordnance Survey, this is not a secret, has a commercial model. You know, we task them to provide public information, but they also have a commercial venture and a commercial arm. We've got to be cognizant of that, and we've got to work within that. We are absolutely about more open data. You know, we, we have a project called Open Up Master Map, which is opening up more of the Ordnance Survey's master map data now, and that will, that will come on stream later this year. So that, that was our first policy commitment last May. So again, I'll come back later this year and explain how we're doing on that, how we're doing on crowdsourcing. I think I'm out of time. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And thanks for great questions as well. <laughs>